This is Andy Perawal for Boxing Social in association with Betfred, and I'm joined by Chris Billum-Smith, the gentleman over Zoom. Chris, how are you doing? Yeah, all good. Cheers, mate. Uh, how are you? Good? I'm good. I'm good. I imagine you're you're better than good now, mate. You actually got an opponent for next week, uh, Vasil Dukar. Just talk to me about Vasil first and foremost, Chris. What do you know about him and for how long have you actually known he was in the pipe work and in the frame to face you? Uh, yeah, well, I know he was actually out sparring Breedis with me uh, last a year ago. So, yeah, it wasn't, you know, literally just, just over a year ago now I, I first, you know, met him. Um, he actually asked me if he wanted to do some extra rounds after sparring. I said, yeah. I said, you better ask them. Uh, and obviously we were paid to be over there and they didn't want us uh, punching lumps out of each other. So uh, we, we didn't get a chance to spar. But, um, you know, he's, he, I've watched him since. I've probably known about him for the last they were trying to get him for the last week or so. There was a lot of other names getting thrown about, um, all different styles and, and and different people from all over. And uh, so it hasn't been ideal, um, but I've kept training, kept grafting, kept sparring, um, just with the, the date in mind. And then it's nice to finally have an opponent who you can, you know, you can, there's a few videos of him so I can watch some stuff of him over the next week before the fight and set an actual game plan out and, um, and go and get the job done. How difficult have you found it to stay mentally prepared and focused on the possibility of having fought fighting, having a fight next week, not knowing if you was going to have an opponent or not? Yeah, it's uh, training wise, it's been fine. Um, my mood probably hasn't. I've probably been miserable to be around half the time, but um, you know, it's 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 part and parcel of the business. It happened obviously in November with with Dion getting his eye injury. And then we were hoping to get a, another opponent in then and they couldn't find anyone. And then this camp, we kind of heard that Dion might not be ready anyway when it was first announced. So we were looking at other names and there was lots of lots of fights that, that we, we, we uh, that they, they offered us and we said yes to. And um, then they came back and they couldn't go ahead for whatever reason. Um, so it's nice to have an opponent. I think... When you look at his record and you look at him, he's it's a bit of a no-win situation. I'm expected to beat him, um, but he's super tough. He can bang. In his last fight, he he won the Czech title, which is only, you know, it was less than 12 weeks ago. It was around 12 weeks ago come fight night, his last fight. So he's, he's active, he's fit, he's strong. Um, he's never been stopped. And he's got, you know, eight out of his nine wins are by knockout. So it's definitely, I'm not looking at him as an easy touch. I can't go in there this is one of those those fights that could be a potential banana skin um, if I'm not on my game. So I've got to really focus and, um, and nail in the game plan for next week. You mentioned earlier on you was obviously out with him in the Breedis camp and you've been able to see him spar, I imagine, with Breedis. Just from kind of those glimpses and from what you could see, how would you assess him? What do you make of him and what do you expect him to bring to the fight next weekend? So he's 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 fairly limited in, in his actual ability, but he looks really tough fit. Um and he looks like he can punch a bit. He he dropped the lad in his last fight in the first round with a body shot, who was it was the guy who stopped Craig, Craig Glover um before I did. Um and he so he, he you know, another bloke who can bang. I think he was losing the fight and end up stopping the bloke in the in the twelfth, uh, tenth round or tenth round, which is the last round for like a Czech title. Um yeah, he, he doesn't look all that, but if you can see why people struggle with him. He boxed the Russian um, Egorov, who's 11 and 0, and he's a bit of a handful at cruiserweight, um, and he didn't stop him, and he's a bit of a puncher and heavy-handed himself. So I'm, I'm expecting I've got to be very disciplined. There's got to be a very disciplined performance. I've got to be switched on for three minutes of of every round, um, you know, all the way through the fights. So it's a 10 rounder, so. Uh, and like I said, in his last fight, he was losing the fight and he, he got a stoppage in the last round. So I've got to go in there and, and be focused uh, throughout the whole fight. There's no switching off from me. Um, and it's got to be a, a real clean and polished performance. Chris, how do you approach this fight in the sense of your own kind of game plan? Because you said earlier, it's kind of a... You know, you're expected to win. It's not a it's a lose lose situation in your eyes. Um, you win, nobody really say anything. And then obviously if you lose, then... It's not, you know, you don't really want to talk about what would happen if you was to lose. But going into this, 
do you look to kind of try to get the job done as early as possible or do you ju just look to show everybody what you've been working on in the gym and to take your time with the fight yeah um you look how tough he is knew he's been in there with it'd be great to get the stoppage it'd be great to get him out there early but you don't i don't go in any fight with that game plan um you know you you just i go in i do my business i break people down and and um in my last couple of fights i've managed to get stoppages um but that's never the game plan. It's it's just about, uh, you know, landing. You've got to land heavy shots as professional boxing and, and um, with 10-ounce gloves, they they do take their toll. So I think the only win situation for me is if I do, do stop him because of, you know, he's never been stopped. I think that's the only win situation for me in the sense of, um, you know, people giving me my dues for the fight or, or whatever. But... To be honest, I'm not bothered about that. The most important thing is getting the win. If it's a 10-round points decision or it's a stoppage, it doesn't matter. I've just got to focus on getting the win. And then hopefully next time we'll have an opponent, you know, 10 weeks out, proper fight in the sense of people uh, people know them. Um, but, yeah, if I, I, if, I, if I don't switch on in this fight, he'll, it, it will be an absolute – it could be an absolute war. Um, and I can't let that happen. So I've got to be very disciplined in this fight and um, put on a, a really good performance. Now, Chris, just explain to everybody the situation with Dion Juma and why that fight has not gone ahead and for how long you've known it, mo it most probably wasn't going to happen. Uh, I don't know the situation, uh, to be honest, with Dion. He's uh, obviously pulled out originally with an eye injury. Um, I believe he had surgery. This is just what I've, I've heard. Um, he had surgery on his eye and wasn't fit enough to box for this fight, whether that's the board won't give him it or his surgery hasn't healed all, all, all the problems that it needs to. Um, yeah, I, I, I have no idea. Um, I, I hope he's okay. I hope he's healthy. I hope he's well. I hope uh, he's well enough to box again because he's, he's a good fighter and it would have been a great fight, me and him. Um, and maybe it can happen after this one. But the, you know, I, I don't know, but I just, you know, hope the main thing is the, the, the border control are there to, to keep boxers safe um, and, as much as I love this sport and I put absolutely everything into it, it's not worth losing eyesight over. Um, there's a life after boxing. Um, so whatever, whatever is the case there, I, I hope, you know, he's, he's being taken care of and, and you know, he, he's got, gets his full eyesight and, and then whatever goes from there goes. But um, yeah, I, I, I'm not entirely sure. I've probably known, I had my doubts at the beginning because I heard about him having eye surgery and stuff. Uh, so I had my doubts like, how is he going to be ready in, in, in that time when, you know, he only had surgery in November or whatever it was, you're going to be spiraled. Because originally it was February the 20th, the date, and then it got moved back a month. So I thought, okay, it might be ready now. But by the time it got moved back, we were a bit, um, we, it was sort of the end of, end of December, early, early January. So we weren't really, really sure about if he would be ready or not. Um, and I was just, just said, Shane, look, if he's not ready, can you make sure that they get another opponent? Um, and they tried and, and tried uh, the whole time for, for the last five, six weeks. I've sort of known that it's going to be somebody else. Um, but now, yeah, obviously, Basil Dukas taking the fight and he's obviously in shape because he's just boxed in December. Um, so that's, that's now my focus. Chris, I'm going to ask because I know you interacted with the clip we put out, I believe it was earlier this week, of Sam Hoyd saying he believes one day you two will meet. He's very confident in his own abilities and that he'd be able to overcome your, your skill set and your abilities. Just kind of your thoughts, do you believe one day you two will meet or are you obviously looking above and beyond that for now? Uh, yeah, no disrespect to Sam. He's obviously lost to, to Dion and Richard. You know, obviously, I, I I lost a split decision to Richard, but um, I've gone on to win, obviously, some good wins domestically with Craig, Craig Glover um, and Nathan Forley. So Sam hasn't really got any of those wins under him. I think he's sort of almost like needs another British eliminator to be able to box the likes of myself and and Dion and, and Tommy McCarthy and that, that sort of level. Um, you know, I, I understand his confidence you know he believes in himself but he doesn't deserve that fight I don't believe at the moment some he could go and fight Craig Glover that would be a great great fight um obviously be Manchester versus Liverpool as well so that would be a, a really interesting fight and I think it'd be a great fan friendly fight and I think that would be one that makes sense in both of their careers um sort of another crossroads fight where 
they both, you know, got a couple, you've got a loss or a couple of losses each and um, they're rebuilding. So they could have a couple of wins under their belt when, when things are back to normal and or one win each and then fight each other. But I just, I'm not looking back at that. You know, I was fighting Dion, who was the guy who beat him. Um, and in my mind, I would have beaten Dion. So it's sort of, it's a backward step for me. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, obviously as boxers, we look forward. We look, you know, we're, we're confident in our abilities. We look to forward to the next fight and then the fight after that and look to keep progressing. And I, I just see that as a, as a backward step at the moment. Now, Chris, just a final couple of things before I let you go. Obviously, the source and Anthony Fowler both return to action next weekend as well. Start off with Lawrence in your white category, attempts to become a world champion for the first time. How's his camp gone and what do you expect in his bout with Christoph Glavatsky? Yeah, um, Lawrence looked great. He's looked very sharp and inspiring. He's had some great sparring in, you know, uh, Southpaw sparring in. He's paid to, to have his sparring in, and as he did for the last camp. Um, uh, he's had some really good work. He looked super sharp. Saw him on the, he was on the pads the day before we sparred, um, before I did my sparring. And he, uh, you know, he, he looks 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 great in the gym. Um, you know, there's no no excuses for, from him in this fight, and I, I believe he won't need them. I think it's a very good fight for Lawrence. It's a very big step up in the sense of you look at Glowacki's wins and his losses as well. You know, he's only lost to two of the two of the very very best cruiserweights that have been around the last couple of years. But I just think stylistically, I think Lawrence will keep walking him onto shots. And I, I personally can't see it going past five rounds. I think Lawrence will land something big within those first five rounds and um, and take him out. And uh, I think once he's, he's hurt him once or, you know, he'll, he'll continue to hurt him until either the ref steps in or he, he's no longer able to continue. Um, so, yeah, I think... Lawrence is going to, you know, become world champion next week, which is uh, unbelievable. You look at his career; he's he's gone up every every belt. He's gone, you know, British, Commonwealth, European, and now world title in just this would be what sixteen or seventeen fights, which is uh, very impressive. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to watching him do the business next week. And then, of course, Anthony Fowler returns to the ring. What, how has the machine been looking in camp, and what should we expect to see from him? Yeah, he's. Same. He's uh he's really improved actually this camp and he's, he hasn't really had the chance to show it so far uh, under Shane. He obviously had the, the Tete fight, which was, you know, uh, that was what it was uh, a year ago or so ago. Um, and then he had the Harper fight and Harper had handbox for a few years and he, he's very sort of come forward tight guard and, and Fowler did what he had to do. He didn't have to show off too much, but he's, he's improving all the time. We were just talking uh yesterday about about how he you know some of the things he does and his that go unnoticed like his head movement his little slips um and he's obviously very heavy handed as well um and i'm looking yeah looking forward to seeing him do the business he's got a you know a tough fight in forte forte so um it, it, but i expect fowler to you know to break him down and probably probably stop him late on um but yeah also got my mate lee cutler on the card as well now so that's good I've just seen that as well. Um, obviously, good uh, good luck to Lee. I'll try and catch up with him before the fight. But Chris, I will leave you now to enjoy your evening. Um, best of luck to you. Best of luck to Shane as well. It's going to be a busy night's work for him yeah. next week. Uh, good luck, like I say, and I'll speak to you again soon. Thank you for speaking to Boxing Social. Nice one. Cheers, Andy. Take care.